What's up everyone, I'm Miss Peer Editor, and today I'm showing you how to analyze Robert Hayden's poems by annotating one of his most famous pieces, Those Winter Sundays, step by step. You can check out my Instagram, TikTok, and Medium pages using the links in the description. Please subscribe if you find this video helpful. Before we dive into the poem, Let's cover some basic information about Hayden's background to give us some context. I learned a lot of this information from the Poetry Foundation, so I'll put a link to that in the description. Robert Hayden was a 20th century writer born and raised in Detroit, and he experienced a traumatic childhood, which informed his later writing. He first attended Detroit City College then went to the University of Michigan to earn his master's degree in English literature. He was the first black poet to become the consultant in poetry to the Library of Congress, a role which is now known as the U.S. Poet Laureate. Hayden's poems cover various topics, including historical figures such as Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, Nat Turner, and John Brown. Some of the titles of his poems are actually the names of these individuals. In his poetry, Hayden ruminates on different events and elements of American history, including the Underground Railroad, the Civil War, and the transatlantic slave trade. Moreover, he discusses childhood stories and religion in his works. Here we have one of Robert Hayden's poems titled Those Winter Sundays, published in 1962. Take some time to pause this video and read this poem over on your own. Alright, I assume that you've paused this video, so let's begin with our analysis. You may have noticed that there's no rhyme scheme or meter, which is a specific rhythmic structure, in this poem. This is an example of free verse, so the poet is taking some liberties with the format. This whole first stanza lists action items that the narrator's father fulfills every Sunday morning. The first line says, Sundays too my father got up early, and the word too immediately implies that the narrator's father has been working all week and he's also waking up on Sundays, usually a day of rest, to start a fire for his family. The word to underscores how generous this act of service is, since the father is sacrificing some sleep and comfort to keep his home warm. When creating a picture of these Sunday mornings, the narrator describes the blue-black cold, and those two colors, blue and black, might remind you of a bruise. This description illustrates how harsh and unyielding the conditions are in these winter mornings. That image of a bruise or physical pain continues with the next line, which depicts the father's cracked hands that ached. One literary device in this line is consonants, since that hard C consonant in the words cracked and ached are repeated. This consonance could mimic the crackling of a fire, but overall, it draws the reader's attention to these words to show how arduous this task is. We can see that the last sentence in this stanza, no one ever thanked him, is concise and blunt. It highlights the father's selflessness, since he's willing to start this fire in the cold without getting anything in return. The concise nature of this statement might also make the reader realize that it only takes two words, thank you, to express gratitude, but no one ever did that for the narrator's father. In this highlighted portion, the narrator makes the cold seem tangible when he creates a picture of his father breaking the cold. As the reader, we can almost hear the wood popping and crackling in our minds, and this detail places us in the narrator's shoes. We have multiple adverbs, such as slowly and indifferently, which are descriptive words that characterize the narrator as reluctant and unappreciative. These adverbs provide more insight into the narrator's lack of enthusiasm when talking to his father as a child, not realizing that he, too, was contributing to the emotional coldness 
and distance in this household. Later, the narrator personifies the house by mentioning its chronic angers. There are multiple layers within this literary device. This reference to chronic anger could mean that the narrator fears adults in the household because they seethe in their own anger. Or it could mean that the family constantly faces issues in this old house, which probably needs a lot of repair. When the narrator remembers that his father drove out the cold and polished his good shoes, he implies that his father demonstrated his love through acts of service rather than warm words or hugs. The last two lines form a rhetorical question, which isn't supposed to be answered, but rather is supposed to emphasize the narrator's shame for his younger self, who did not appreciate his father's love. Repeating the phrase, what did I know, establishes a regretful, despairing tone, as if the narrator is shaking his head and regretting his actions. These underlined words in the last line might confuse you. After all, we don't usually think of love as austere and lonely. But these words are meant to contrast love and loneliness and show that the two aren't always as far apart as they seem. We can see in this poem that the father expressed his love through lonely acts, such as building a fire by himself. He was willing to endure this loneliness to support his family. Now let's create a study guide for those winter Sundays. In terms of structure, this poem is an example of free verse since it has neither rhyme nor meter. The poem consists of full sentences which makes it sound as though the narrator is reciting a monologue. We have three stanzas, a quintain, quatrain, and another quintain. This means that the poem has five lines, four lines, and five lines again. There are two characters in the poem. The narrator is a child who eventually grows to regret his attitude towards his father, whereas his father is a hard-working man who makes sacrifices for his family. There are four key symbols in this poem. One is the cold itself, a symbol of hardships that families face and or the emotional distance between father and son. On the other hand, the fire represents love and connection, since it glows brightly and keeps the whole family warm. The father's hands represent sacrifices made on behalf of others. Lastly, the house symbolizes fraught family dynamics or dysfunctional family structures. When analyzing the writing style of this poem, we can examine tone and diction. The narrator's tone is wistful and despairing, while his diction is simple and introspective because he's reflecting on his own character and feelings. By the end of the poem, the audience will likely feel that the narrator is very self-aware. Taking all of these elements into consideration, we can write theme statements to explain the universal ideas about human nature that this poem conveys. First, many children grow up taking their caregivers for granted, not realizing that sacrifice itself is a form of demonstrating love. Additionally, when people do not show their appreciation for others, they often come to regret it. Another theme is that while humans usually associate love with togetherness and companionship, love also manifests itself in the form of soul acts of service. And our last theme statement is, when parents or guardians are emotionally detached, their children find their homes a hostile environment for sharing their feelings. As a child, the narrator feels closed off from the rest of his family, probably because his caregivers never encouraged him to express his emotions and repressed their own. Thanks so much for watching. In the comments, feel free to write any other themes you found in this poem. If you found this analysis helpful, please like, subscribe, and tap the bell to receive notifications whenever I make a new video. I'm Miss Peer Editor, and I'll see you next time.